Well, hello there. You're watching the press preview. A first look at, of course, at what is on the front pages. Time to see what's making the headlines with, for the very first time, the Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine and the associate editor at the Daily Mirror, Kev McGuire. Welcome, Sarah. And uh, great to see you back, Kevin. More from both of you in just a moment. Uh, front pages, though, let us start with... The Metro, grin and bear it, that's the headline in the Metro as Jeremy Hunt prepares to deliver a budget which would start filling the £60 billion black hole. The story also dominates the front of the Financial Times as they write about the Chancellor's aims to cut public spending and raise taxes. Daily Telegraph quotes Jeremy Hunt saying, we will face into the storm as he prepares to unveil £24 billion in tax rises. The Daily Express tells of how Jeremy Hunt's fair and honest budget will help weather the economic storm. The Guardian reports on his plans to lift price caps on energy bills, affecting millions of households. While The Times shines a light on how tomorrow's budget will impact the wealthy. Daily Star's front page highlights Donald Trump's hope to plant the American flag on Mars. And the Daily Mail focuses on the rationing of eggs in supermarkets amid the bird flu and issue and the war in Ukraine. Well, a reminder, by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us and our guests. So let's go to Sarah Vine and Kevin McGuire, who are with us to look at um, what is a good set of papers, I suppose, uh, for anyone who's waiting to see what's in the um, autumn statement. But, Sarah, let's look at the Metro, first of all. Uh, Grin and Bear had a picture of a, a smiling Chancellor there uh, with not a lot mm. of cheer to deliver, one presumes. Yeah, it's not really a smile, it's more of a grimace, isn't it? I mean, he's got a really difficult balancing act to try and pull off tomorrow, um, especially given the mess that Liz Truss made at the last uh, attempt to do some sort of budget. And I think that he, I mean, you know, the thing about Jeremy Hunt is that he, he you know, he's he wasn't the Tories' first choice, probably, the, uh, for, for, for Chancellor. He's there. He's got there by a slightly roundabout way, and now he's sort of got the most important job of the last, I don't know, three years. So it's a big moment for him. So what is the priority then, Kevin? I mean, calming the markets was the initial priority. Uh, it's tackling inflation. But many on the right wing of the Conservative Party are now talking about the real enemy being recession. Um, so the balancing act is a genuine one, isn't it, for the Chancellor? No, absolutely. As he cuts spending and raises uh, taxes, he can be trying to fill in a hole as he's still digging it deeper. Bank of England said uh, the recession could be two years, but not particularly shallow. Well, he, he could actually extend it and make it deeper. And I, I, I look at that front page on the Metro, and I think it's all wrong for Jeremy Hunt and Rishi Sunak, because grin and bear it, it's going to be really grim tomorrow. And the Metro notes that he managed to smile. It's not going to be like that for families and businesses that are going to be clobbered. So I think that mood is wrong. But I, I note the Metro accepts on critically there is a, a, a 60 billion black hole. That black hole, uh, to some extent, is just an, an accounting method. And if you shift when uh, the uh, debt would fall as a proportion uh, you know, of national wealth a, a few years or calculate it differently. There isn't a black hole at all like that, but they've uh, they've accepted it uncritically. I, th I think we're going to see tomorrow a, a lot of a lot of pain, and they're going to be saying, "Look, you, you've got to take it." Uh, they'll blame trust to some extent, but the problems were in way before trust with the economy. Some of it inflicted by Brexit. Some of it by COVID, some of it by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Ukraine. some of it the Conservatives doing things over the, the last 12 years that have just made it, made it worse rather than growing Britain. Well, certainly the Governor of the Bank of England talks about waves of supply shocks hitting the UK economy, you know, the pandemic, um, you know, largely China-oriented, I suppose, uh, but also, you know, shipping containers in the wrong place, you name it, all of that supply chain issue there. Um, then, of course, the labour market retracting, not as many people in the labour market, and then, of course, the war in Ukraine, the massive impact on energy and food prices, which we've seen today, have we not, Sarah? Inflation at, uh, you know, a 40-plus year high. Um, the Financial exactly. Times, though, um, saying Jeremy Hunt will seek to restore Britain tarnished economic re reputation with this massive package of tax rises and spending cuts. And certainly that was also something that um, Andrew Bailey talked about today. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is that, that there is a tarnished... That 
the Tories have a tarnished financial reputation. The, the thing is, the difficulty they have here is that people have always relied on the Conservative Party to be fiscally responsible. I mean, traditionally, <coughs> Kevin will probably argue this with me, but traditionally it's been the Labour Party who have been profitable with money. And the sort of the sort of dynamic has always been Labour spends all the money, then the Tories come in and then they fix the big black hole in the finances and then everything goes back to sort of being OK. And they've totally deviated from that. Um, and yes, you're right, there's lots of factors. There's Ukraine, there's global headwinds, all this kind of stuff. But the bottom line uh, for voters is that, you know, this administration has got us in, in a real, in a really difficult financial situation. And that is the problem. Yes, I mean, are you going and back all the way to austerity in this or are you, are you focusing it on yeah. Liz Truss? <coughs> right, right the way back, well, you I'm, think? Well, I'm sort of going back all the way, I mean, you know, when when the Cam when Cameron came in, there was that famous note left to the Treasury, you know, sorry, we've spent all the money. And there was a sort of justification at that point for austerity. But the problem with they have now is that after all these years in power, there's no justification really other than, you know, their own fiscal, not incompetence perhaps, but I know maybe incompetence is the word, but do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it, that's the problem for the Tories. That's the real problem for the Tories, it, it politically. And I think that's what people are going to really struggle with, which is that, you know, they're supposed to be the fiscal grown ups, and this is not really what we're seeing. The, the, the Conservatives crashed the economy specifically around the trust period, the Resolution Foundation says 30 billion that 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 cost. That is Labour's best attack line in decades because there is a truth in it. And people saw that with their mortgages, where the mortgage market was was wrecked, the pound plummeted in, in value. But returning to the austerity austerity of 2010, I think would be a mistake because the tax rises then and the spending cuts snuffed out a, a promising recovery. I put it no more than a promising recovery. And growth never really reached uh, any, any significant level over the over that following decade. And as a result, debt, national debt, is it was below a it was below a, um, a, a trillion when the uh, when the Conservatives took over, and it's over two trillion now. I think it's two point four trillion. So it just it just doesn't work. But the the FT pick up one of the one of the measures and it's very it's very ft-ish but it may matter to us all is changing the rules to allow pension funds to invest in green energy now that's how, that's how, that sounds great but the rules they're ch changing are are solvency rules which are, are, are there to try and ensure pension funds don't go belly up don't go bankrupt so it is something of a, a risk it's a it's a gamble just got to hope it isn't a reckless gamble. Well, many of the newspapers, including the Daily Telegraph, go through some of the specifics that we can expect. Um, the paper's saying that the autumn statement will include £30 billion of spending cuts, although Mr Hunt will pledge to support core public services such as the NHS. The article also suggests it will protect uh, schools and the police as well. Uh, he's also likely to confirm benefits and state pensions will rise in line with inflation. But what about those tax increases? You know, clearly the, you know, the trust side of the Conservative Party have been rather bruised and quiet. Will there be complaints, do you think, from uh, the, the Tory party itself about tax rises? Suggestion from the Daily Telegraph, Sarah, £24 billion of tax increases <laughs> equivalent to £860 for every household in the country is what we can expect. Yeah, I mean, tax and spend has always been, again, a Labour policy. It's not a Tory policy. It's not what the Conservatives do. The Conservatives are all about letting people keep more of their money so they can make better decisions. And the thing about this administration is that they've also got, got a situation where they are being, they, we're, we're hemorrhaging money in our public services. You know, if you look at the NHS, you know, last week there was a story about, you know, some agency nurses being paid £2,000 to fill gaps that were in the rotors. You know, we're throwing more money at the French to not stop migrants crossing uh, the channel. It, there's a sense that you're paying more and you're sort of getting less and the incompetence is getting worse. So, I mean, they're, they're really, they're, they're in a really tight corner, the Conservatives at the moment on this, I think. And I think, I, I thought the 45p thing was 
silly and and just such bad optics. I just don't really understand how they even contemplated doing it. But at a certain point, you've got to you've got to remain true to your conservative values if you're a conservative prime minister, and that is not high taxation. I'm afraid. I mean, yeah. really, just not. Yes, and the accusation against Rishi Sunak was he was the Chancellor that saw the highest levels of taxation for 70 years, Kevin. So, you know, he knows that tag <laughs> that is all too damaging for him. But the specifics of the tax rises um, look to be, and a lot of this has been heralded before, uh, largely made up of freezing tax thresholds. The stealth raid, as it's known, means hundreds of thousands will pay tax for the first time or be dragged into higher rates. For example, the 45p tax rate moving from £150,000 to £125,000. Pounds. But Sarah's right about, you know, hemorrhaging money. Uh, the Telegraph also tells us the National Audit Office says the NHS has become less productive since the pandemic um, due to high staff sickness levels. So, you know, that, that and the cost of borrowing, it, it's, 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 a, it's not a pretty picture, is it, for anyone to be in charge? Yeah, if, if it's complaints about tax rates, Sarah should have a word with the party that's been in power for the last 12 years and, as you say, has got the highest uh, uh, highest uh, taxation burden, as it's called, uh, since the since the 1940s. But I just, I, personally, I don't view spending, investing money in, in health and education as hemorrhaging money. And there is a, there is a problem in, in the NHS, certainly over agency work. And then again, I suggest Sarah should have a word with the party that's been running the NHS for the last 12 years, why they never got a proper uh, staffing plan to get people into the NHS. I mean, if they listen to me more, to they wouldn't be in this situation. To, to, to agencies. But the, there is a, there's also a productivity problem, un, unquestionably, uh, since COVID. But that's, you know, it's because people are under such strain under incredible strain, and they're exhausted and they're worked out. Uh, for instance, we've seen a lot of uh, lot of talk recently about having hospitals fully staffed on Saturdays and Sundays. Now, I think that's a really good idea. But if you're shifting staff from the other days of the week, well, it's not going to be running uh, at its current level on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or you have to hire even more staff to work those days. There's no, there's no simple answer. But the NHS, when Jeremy Hunt, now the ch now the Chancellor, who when he was the Health Secretary, longest serving Health Secretary in the, the history of the NHS, he imposed the tightest financial straight jacket on it. And those problems are still there. They're not they're not solved yet. And overall spending, we're around somewhere around the middle, just below the middle of, of comparable countries. OK, I just want to get so to it's, energy. it's not as if it's, we're, we're splurging cash on it. It's just not the case. I just want to get to well, energy. Well, I just think well. the cash is... Go on, then, go on then, Sarah. Sorry. Sorry. Go I it. just think the problem... I mean, I agree with you, Kevin. Uh, education is something very that one should spend a lot of money on if possible. But it's more about what you do with that money. The key thing is, is that you have to make sure these services are properly run and properly administered. And I think that's the issue here is it's, a, it's poor management, really, which okay. means that there's a lot of waste in the system. Yeah. And just very quickly on energy, I'll rattle through it. Um, Telegraph reporting mm -hmm. uh, that Mr Hunt will also announce a multi-billion pound plan to insulate homes and upgrade boilers in a drive to cut Britain's energy demands. While The Guardian is saying that millions face a rise in their energy bills as Hunt lifts the price cap. We kind of knew that was coming. Suggestion is, though, that, that some help will continue after next April. But perhaps we can talk about that uh, more next time. Lots more to pack in to the programme, I have to say, including the very latest two on uh, that rocket attack uh, on Poland. Extraordinary pictures there of the huddle at the G20. Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me once again, the Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine and the associate editor at the Daily Mirror, Kev McGuire. Welcome back to both of you. So some extraordinary meetings underway, both all those world leaders who'd been woken up in Bali, Kevin, um, those who'd been there for the G20, uh, NATO member states meeting today too after this rocket explosion on the wrong side of the border in Poland. Look at that picture there. Um, and the continuing yeah. story now is that... Uh, Zelensky insisting it was Russian. I mean, is it is it time to, to to let this go? Do you think for the Ukrainian leader? I think it is. Look at look at that. That's uh, Biden at the very front. That's Biden on the left and the, the back. That's uh, that's Sunak. He'll be well pleased. He's sitting there. Although I'm sure he liked his face in the picture. But you can just see the panic because if it had been fired by the Russians onto a NATO member. Uh, 
you know, art, Article uh, 5, collective defence, would have really raised the state. But Biden very quickly said he thought the trajectory meant it, w it wasn't fired from Russia. Uh, the US, NATO, the Poles themselves all say it was an air defence missile used by the Ukrainians. Zelensky is still saying, no, that's not the case. I think he should let it go because I think facts and truth matter in wars. It's often the, uh, the fog of war and there's confusion, difficult to get to them. You, uh, you know, the truth is the first casualty of war has been around in a sane evidence of it since uh, the 19th century. But look, everybody else thinks it was fired by the Ukrainians. It's an accident. Two people are dead. It's a tragedy. But Zelensky wanted that to be fired by the Russians to try and pull NATO into the war uh, in a much deeper way. But I think he's just got to accept it now. It was one of his own. It was an accident. OK, Sarah, I was one of those people who stayed up late last night to listen to Donald Trump uh, deliver the non-surprise announcement that mm. he was going to stand. You know, what does it say that the only front page he's making is the Daily Star, who says an orange man vows to conquer the red planet? I mean, what, what, what are his prospects if you look at that? I know. I mean, he's just a joke, isn't he? I, I, I don't know why he's doing it. He's just wasting his money. I, I mean, his supporters are also bonkers as well. I don't know if you've seen any footage of them. They're all completely insane. Um, and even his daughter, Ivanka, who said, I love my father very much, but I'm not going to get involved this time round. Um, and I think she's right. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Why, why does he? Why does he want to do it? Who knows? It's a mystery. I, I can't understand it. And the, and also, he's done so badly. I just don't. You know, he li literally is just throwing good money after bad. Yes, and I'm not sure he uses his own money, does he? He he uses the free media attention, which he certainly got back in 2016. Um, but the the prospect is, if if more than one candidate stands against him for the Republican nomination, Kevin, you know, he'll get 35% of the vote in most winner-takes-all states. He could still be the nominee. Oh, yeah, it's not it's not impossible. I mean, I really hope he isn't. We saw the chaos that was unleashed last time. Uh, and he was laughed at then, all the scandals somehow bounced off, off him and he became, became the president. I feel if he'd have launched... Uh, Last week before the midterms, he'd have been in a much stronger position, but we saw his uh, your bonkers candidates were doing particularly badly. Now, in some ways, uh, somebody who's on the left and you know, in the state would be a Democrat voter. Uh, I would like him to stand, because I think Biden could beat him. Ron DeSantis, who has many of the policy positions of Trump, but doesn't have the, uh, the, you know, the same uh, crazed uh, exterior by and large, although some of the bits, some of the stunts who are sending uh, migrants... Uh, to um, refugees to uh, Martha's Vineyard, and that yeah. was a and bit just, concerning. But, just, um, Kevin, just 30 no, seconds I'll, left. If you don't I'll, mind, I'm going to cut in. We, I just want to get to Sarah's paper. Um, already worried about Christmas turkeys. You've got 10 seconds, Sarah. Now it's eggs. I know, it's a very worrying situation, the egg situation. I like eggs. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, we can probably all cut back our consumption of eggs. I mean, my cholesterol is probably not what it should be, thanks to my egg consumption. But um, there's just been this awful, uh, awful avian flu, flu everywhere. And, uh, you know, that's just what's caused the problem. Um, Sarah? I'm going to have to cut you off as well. I've managed to do it to both of you. I do apologise. <laughs> so, fine, Kevin McGuire. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.